This might be the one where we get cancelled. Do you reckon? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Based on the three conversations we had before we started rolling, I think this could be the one. Just, yeah, also, remember, Evers, you're very tired right now. So yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Stay off a plane. All right, so well, that's why I've not even bothered changing because I don't have the energy because we've just done a day what of filming. About on the plane? No, I've no. just done a day of filming. But also, I, I've just come back from New York and it was an overnight flight and I didn't get my, any sleep. On Why were you out there? People want to know. Uh, well, I was out there for the Today Show, among other things. Actually, I was out there for the Influence and Marketing Show um, and we were asked to speak about what we do and the power of the community. And I have to be honest, considering it was an Influence and Marketing Show, there were some great panels, some great talks for some very serious stuff, like a panel of five attorneys talking about like legal contracts between oh. content creators and influencers and brands and the importance of that, heavy. which is you know heavy hitting stuff for a conference right the way down to agencies and the rise of short form content and platforms and TikTok and everything really interesting whereas I don't think anyone actually spoke throughout the whole conference about the audience oh, and the community except for and Evers. that was kind of my that was my role so I did a keynote on the power of you guys everything we've been able to unlock because of them and the reason that we are we are not influencers the four of us are not influencers we're influenced we are influenced <laughs> by the millions of influencers, you guys who watch our content. And we said that was kind of. The I thing. hate that word. Oh, I, hate, I hate that word so much. An influencer. This is going to annoy a lot of people, maybe, but. Who describes themselves as an influencer? Like, I, 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 the, <laughs> Barry's got his hand The up. industry. <laughs> it's terrible. It's the industry. I influence people, actually. Yeah, I have that G- power. Yeah. If I genuinely influence yeah. people, then I will be making the world a worse place. <laughs> well, what about your daughter? Yeah, well, I'm trying hard with her, but <laughs> she already doesn't listen to me. Oh, I'm glad it went well. It, it did yeah. go well. The talk went well. The Today Show. That yeah, we watched it. Sales by, mm, like brilliant. four minutes so absolutely great. whizzes by, but it was good to be back there. I like um, that you n- needed to squeeze two recipes into a four-minute segment, and Carson Daly just was intent on changing the subject whenever you were trying to do the recipe. Yeah, I mean, valid. He wanted to know what garam masala was. He wanted to know, you yeah. know, how, Prince William. how and why me and you guys and Prince William hang out. Yeah. And it turns out that that takes away from the four minutes you have to cook two recipes. <laughs> so it was a bit rushed. Yeah. But hey, it was, it's always fun. Hey, I thought you did a great job. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it was the great. toughest of gigs. Really good. Managed to squeeze in a Broadway show, what jazz club, and then flew home. What did you see? Water for elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Very good circus. Why were you laughing you're at? Your life is ridiculous. Did you did you know that there's a musical of The Notebook? Yeah, it was opposite the Water of the Evans. Was it? I didn't. I, Mainry went to see it last night, and I I didn't. I had no idea that it was on. I just saw it on her Instagram. No, it's Mainry like, in New York now. I should have probably reached yesterday. out. Ah. Yeah. So was I yesterday. <laughs> it <wouldn't, laughs> if that's you, the problem. That's why I'm so tired. I didn't sleep, and now I'm. If tired. you'd have met up with Mainry, you'd have missed your flight. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> she has that influence. So should we should we start this podcast? Um, who's going to introduce today's guest? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> so many comments have been saying they just wanted like a, a deep dive, a chit chat, and we do a chit chat occasionally, but we don't deep dive. Yeah. Yeah, and I think after we did the Kush episode and people got to learn more about his journey and his whole story actually that inspired a lot more comments about oh i don't know that much about the guys and it's, we don't talk a lot about we drip feed ourselves. it into everything no. but we never deep dive yeah this you're right we could get cancelled now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this absolutely could be the episode that gets us cancelled because uh we put out a social <laughs> post to uh, uh, lots of you online asking for your hardest questions they could be funny they could be deep they could be personal and we're going to answer some of them right now so that you can get to know us on a deeper level uh, we could start quite easy if you want uh, describe each other in one word oh. tell you what shall we line them up go down the aim, line aim, aim at one person okay and you get four words about one person okay three words sorry good math <laughs> <laughs> Do we start with Barry? <laughs> yeah, let's start with Barry. Why start with me? That's not what I was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Start with Barry, okay. Diversity. And I'm not talking about the dance group. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm so white middle class. How am I diverse? <laughs> <laughs> in your business approach, you're always thinking about things we haven't done or got in our okay. arsenal yet. Okay. Gooners. <laughs> Maverick. <laughs> I'll take that. Is that a Top Gun reference or is that a Top Gun Oh, reference? no, I didn't want it to be a Top Gun <laughs> reference. Unpredictable. Mm. Yeah. Would be my word. Mm. Usually, I thought they all lean into each other. Yeah. All those three yeah. words are quite similar. It's one of those things of usually when we go into a meeting, we kind of, 
we know what we're going to say and I know if you take over my sentence I know how you're probably going to finish it we kind of know where things are going to go invite Barry into a meeting you don't know where it's going you don't know where it's going and you're going to come out having agreed to do something that you've never even <laughs> thought about doing before <laughs> and that we've never discussed before which is completely unpredictable and I'd say 75% of the time it's a good thing good and it's always been that way <laughs> I remember that one of the very first times that ever happened was the beer when we had proper jobs outside of Sorted because Sorted wasn't full time. Barry did a bit of graphic design and, and kind of website design and photography and stuff. And one day he came back and went, I think I've just agreed to do a job in return for 1,500 bottles of Sorted oh, beer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. And it was, he rebranded yeah. this brewery. He was making amazing beer, rebranded the bottles. <laughs> And rather than take payment, just went, yeah, you can pay me in 1,500 bottles of beer, which we branded Sorted Blonde, and that was the kind of crazy idea that he comes back we with. We should do more of those deals. <laughs> <laughs> They're great deals. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've left that kind of mark on you guys. I'm proud yeah. of that one. I like, I like kind of throwing the boat about it a bit. It's, yeah, that's, that's very rewarding to hear. Thank you. Okay, Jay, how are we describing Jamie? Are we going back down the line, Ebers? Inclusive. What a great Are you word. just doing like a 2024 HR? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword. Keyword. I'm reading our Notion handbook. No, you always manage to sort of put your arm around everyone and bring everyone and make sure everyone's involved inside and outside of the business. Inclusive. Inclusive. I'd say lovely. <laughs> you're just lovely. You're lovely. Aww. You're lovely to be around. You're lovely to people. You, yeah. When you're with Jamie, you have a lovely time. Oh, this is weird. We yeah, we're we we never nice, to, nice things to each other. I don't like this. Well, Sorry, we're coming down the line. Yeah, You've bullied on. me for 14 years, so I don't suppose that will change. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I do the one I want to say? I think I, think I know do the one I say. Is it the one do that I'm in your phone book as? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not jolly. You're not jolly. Uh, jolly. No, I say true. Oh. Incredibly, I think you're, it's, you're, it's transparent. You're always true to who you are. We'll never back down from that and let's move on because this is uncomfortable it's yeah really, really this really is getting really guys. wet right, right quick yeah. fire to yeah. Mike <laughs> yeah just get this over and done with Evers for Mike chaos oh better and if you've heard of the chaos theory genius comes out of it okay, but there's right. a process that is slightly uncomfortable to get there fair Mike, Mike sees this for me selfless yeah that's a oh. really good one yeah um, deeper is that, what, is that, what, is says, that what you say to me? There you go. There you go. There you go. And there we go. Predictable. We can finish each other's sentences. Because I'd say deep, but I think it's deeper than you'd expect, which is why to try and fit that into one word is harder. But mm. deeper, because I think you give off an air of just being a really nice guy and there not being much else there. But <laughs> <laughs> I love these backhanded compliments. But. but <laughs> understanding the amount of time effort and work that you put into everything it kind of fits into that selfless yeah. uh, word that you mentioned that there is so much that you do that kind of goes unseen thanks guys lovely Ebers I would say relentless mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, take that how you want <laughs> no but it, it, in a positive way in the when it comes to working or doing something it's I'm going to, un I am unrelenting. I'm going to keep doing this until yeah. it's done properly. And you can always rely on you to do a really good, thorough job. Super reliable. I think reliability is a good one as well. Yeah, I think mine, mine's, definitely. Mine, mine's similar, but I, I don't mean it ironically, but straight. <laughs> <laughs> it tells you are a straight thinker. You, when you know what you want, you won't stop till you, till you get it. And there's... We always talk about in in this sorty. We go on lots of different routes. We go on zigzags. You're we not zigzag a zigzag person. Lot. You are a straight line. Give me the goal, and I'll get you there. Unless you give me an orienteering map, and then you <laughs> could get lost a few <laughs> yeah, times definitely. on the route. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless, yeah, yeah. The word I had was thorough. Was the first word mm. that came to came thorough. to mind. That's good because I think it's everything that you put your mind to will be done one hundred percent. Yeah, there is no stone left unturned, and it's always completely thought through and i know that that sometimes has negative elements to it as well as good elements and it stops you from doing certain things because you're slightly risk averse in that way but I, that thorough element is such a positive element has guided us through so many things over the years that i don't think we would have done otherwise there, there's a lot of things that we've done where we thought if ebbers thinks we've thought yeah. of everything 
we probably yeah. thought of everything. <laughs> we'll be okay. If Ebers is happy, we're probably covered. Yeah, yeah. He's, I think he's uh, relentless. <laughs> <laughs> to relentless. have like to there's so many things that we've done over the last how many years have we known each other now? Twenty six. There's, there's a lot. Nineteen ninety eight. And to still be going and st- to still be friends is quite a lot. Yeah, I think. When we've been casted for TV shows in the past, they've all gone, give us your characters, and we've all found it really hard because we're just us. Mm. But that's the first time I think we've seen four very different descriptions where you go, that's probably what we are and why this works. Mm. Different words, but lots of synonyms because I think we all know each other so well. Right, well, that was far too twee. Have we got more? <laughs> Have we got other questions? <laughs> No, I think Thanks, guys. I like that. We all feel good about ourselves. Let's yeah. stop there, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's stop there. Right. Let's get to the juice. Um, but I think uh, you touched on it. One of the questions that came up a lot was people wanting to know that balance between being colleagues and friends and how that works between the four of us. And when does one stop and the other start? Because well, like, I don't know if it does. I, I'm no, sure, I don't I'm think it does. I'm not sure if it does so much and and we've always I mean with the wider group of friends some of whom were involved in Sorted in the very first days we still go away do stuff have days in London and it's like we revert back to nothing has changed but we realise that is also just our days in the studio when the cameras are rolling it's just us there is no acting it is just us Yeah. so I think think that friend and work thing the, the crossover there is no crossover or overlap it is the same thing on filming days but I think actually when we start doing more of the strategic stuff around running the business as we have done for many many years that's when you actually have to be quite understanding of what where your role is in the business and mm. what we're all good at yeah. and where our strengths and weaknesses are yeah. different to friends of just all put your arms around each other we just get stuff done I think where where you're good is you will you'll be the first to go uh, guys it's been a while we haven't really been friends in a while in terms of like... <laughs> Should we go for a drink? <laughs> let's go for a beer. Or like there'll be... And it's usually annoyingly triggered by something going wrong in someone's life to go, oh, crikey, yeah, life is cracking on. Reset. We, we should talk. Um, yeah. And that's like... And to know that that's always there is incredibly comforting. You never forget it, but at the same time, we almost need reminding of it. Although when we do that, we go out to a pub rather than sit in our own pub and record the conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's so just, yeah. just so we know. Yeah. And I think that's g- what people were commenting and saying, is like they want to see those kind of conversations when the cameras stop rolling. rolling. And I don't know if this is necessarily that, but it feels closer to it. See where it gets to. I'd, I'd describe us as a group of friends first with a common goal. Yeah. And it just happens to be work-related now since we've managed to turn it into a business but actually the common goal was always just let's have a load of fun and document it and talk and share with people watching and joining in and have as much fun and try and make sure that we continue to progress and the quality gets better and better and better and push ourselves I don't think that's changed no but for, for me that's the the reason it's the community the audience that are watching this that have given us purpose I don't think we set out to create a purpose. No. I think because they came to the conversation and it resonated, we've adopted this incredible following and you go, that's our purpose. If this was a recruitment company, we wouldn't still be going. We, our hearts no, would not be that's so true. in the same way. Because we're seeing an impact, you go, I, I could, this is so rewarding. How do we keep feeding this? I think that's why we all care and hopefully everybody involved in this cares so much about building this because you... You can see change. And it's how rewarding it is. It sounds like a cliche, but the number of times I find myself in conversations with friends, family outside of what we do, and they're like, oh, uh, you know, what are you doing at work next week? And I always laugh to myself, work, work. <laughs> work. Yeah. It's I'm hard like, work. It's hard work, but, it's but not I don't work. use the W word because every day is different yeah, and every yeah. day is an element of joy, even if that joy is exhausting, knackering, you get through it and you feel accomplished. It's hard work, but it doesn't feel like work. Things have got more serious over the last few years because the business side of what we do has grown and suddenly, and also on a personal side, we have responsibilities with families and things like that. We want to make it work and we want to make it bigger and we kind of have that, um, you know, the conversation that we have with with everyone online and the content and things, it is getting bigger and bigger. The team has got 
bigger and that requires and more responsibility every month. And every month every I, month every so month I think that's the that biggest bit. pressure I, I <laughs> that's I think the thing that, that gets that, me it's a bit that bugs me because I forget that a bit because I, I, I don't do the people management bit in the business for, for a very good reason but unpredictable I, yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> like I genuinely because I we sit down as a board and it's my family and friends that I sit down with to work with so therefore I don't think that anyone at the table has to worry about getting paid or anything else I'm thinking purely and we're all sitting there fighting for the exact same cause we can have we can argue about a subject matter fall out completely over it knowing the next day we're still friends we're still family it doesn't make a difference we're fighting for the same cause and my problem sometimes with people in the business is I forget <laughs> that they are here to get paid <laughs> I assume they all have the same reason but I think as they're all starting to walk away. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I Ed's think, going but I home. Think looking around, they <laughs> are. But I think in what we've created, people, everyone who works with Sorted or on any project that we do, understands the difference that we're trying to impact on the world, and therefore there's a reason to stay and not just get paid. Yeah, I don't think it. The type of business that we are isn't the one to come to because it's a job. Mm. It, there's more to it than that and I think that that's always been one of the, the challenges that we've had is that we have job descriptions obviously for, for various members of the team they all have their specialist roles in what they do but there's also the whole thing of everyone needs to jump in and get involved yeah. and mm. work on what needs to be worked on at that point because we're all trying to do the same thing at the end of the day we, um, also, we had that conversation not too long ago about how do we define profit because it's not just about well, because money. we have to find another way to just <laughs> we have to find a way to justify the fact that there isn't much profit but profit no. is how else do you get out of bed and feel like you have profited and and changed what have you things. earned have, what have yeah. you earned what have you how have you shifted the dial how have people are all around the world learned something adopted something changed something been informed about something how have we helped it we get those amazing messages and, and and letters and all sorts those that's profit right there as much as dollars on the bottom line do you know I sometimes need to talk to other people outside of our bubble to reappreciate what it is that we do and it was I was at an event a couple of days ago and people who hadn't you won't believe this people who hadn't heard of us <laughs> people who didn't know what we do can you believe they they've obviously not been online <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and I was explaining what we do and and sort of the scale of it in terms of the amount of people that are part of the community and the kinds of things that we work on together and what we achieve and we did something with Prince William last year and, I, and as soon as you sort start talking through it again and you're kind of going over it you go oh god how have we done this this is unbelievable <laughs> how did that happen how did it happen and it is completely unbelievable because I sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in the long hours and the hard work that's going into it and feeling like we're you know thinly spread with everything that we're working on we're, we're doing so much and sometimes you do just get stressed out or burnt out from mm. it uh, from it all and you do need those moments of going yeah, but we're not we don't have it bad <laughs> but that, that is the zigzag day. theory right yeah yeah, mm. yeah. can I tell um, an uh, embarrassing story that I had the other day uh, at the school gates um, <laughs> so uh, this uh, one of the dads was chatting to me about like you're doing about, extra about, curriculum about, what about you... work and was asking me <laughs> this, uh, was asking me what, what I did I, and I mentioned that I, do, I do stuff on YouTube oh really I love YouTube honestly I've been watching like I'm a bit addicted like, okay so what sort of things do you watch he goes oh you heard of um, guys called a red link yeah heard of those um, <laughs> the side men addicted to them tell you what throw it right back um, do you remember um, uh, Grace and Mamrie love their stuff uh, Flula really good fun <laughs> Uh, and every, he was, he was he was listing off every collaboration. With. He goes, so what do you do? I went, oh, you should really know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. It was like, I found myself going, but you also don't want to... you haven't heard of assorted food? He goes, what's that? I went, oh, we've collaborated with every Kiss single person you mentioned. all of the videos with them. Yeah, and I, felt, I was like, and he was like, no, I've never heard of you. I was like, oh, damn it. Yeah, we really try quite so infuriating and a bit embarrassing. No, like, oh, it's fine. Day no. by day. <laughs> Take all day by day. <laughs> You got another question? I have got other questions. Yes. Go on. Uh, uh, first, refills. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Refill. yeah, yeah. I just yeah, yeah. Refill. Yeah. You had a question. I did have a question. Um, we kind of touched on it in that last uh, question about times that we don't necessarily get on, and people want to know like 
what have been the biggest disagreements <laughs> that we've had? <laughs> Are there things that have nearly brought Sorted to an end? Uh, particularly around branded projects or deals that some of us wanted to do and some of us didn't want to do. There's been a few uh, altercations. Uh, altercations. I think like there. the ones that stand out to me, let's go back to, I'm going to talk about you two first of all. You two fell out. I was going to say, oh, oh is this blue, second, blue food seconds blue. before we went live on it? Yeah, we had a stand-up blue blue row. Live. We had a stand-up row about blue food dye. And I, but, but I think <laughs> in front of everyone. <laughs> yeah, but I think just before we were about to go live uh, on yeah. a pass it on. That was yeah. heightened. That was heightened adrenaline <laughs> and an a, absolute <laughs> wobble. But that's a good example. That's happened a few times. I think all of us have had moments on camera where we've got. There's been a, a, a strong disagreement, but that example was one that I thought was really quite refreshing because. Uh, they both had solid arguments behind them and we ended up understanding one way was better than the other but you had to go on a journey yeah. Yeah. to do that it happened at a very unfortunate time <laughs> we, it had to happen with a 90 second countdown to going live <laughs> no no it wasn't that you were arguing and the show said going okay uh, the VT's rolling <laughs> Minutes, yeah, but we haven't resolved live. this yet, two so no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, context, we need context. to give some context yeah. to it as well, wasn't it? I think we were doing it. The challenge was making something that was entirely blue. That was it. And we had a whole bunch of blue ingredients. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I think the, the normals are going to struggle. So grab some food dye. And you're like, why are you grabbing that? We shouldn't be using that. And I was like, well, it's blue. Like, we don't know what else to do. What if we don't need... And it escalated. And I was, I was thinking it from it from one perspective you were thinking it from it from a food perspective and then it just ended up we we almost were shouting at each other whilst getting further away <laughs> in the room and then yeah it was so well, close to going were live. we dressed as dinner ladies at the I time think we might have been dressed as <laughs> it was one of those it, it was, was one of those past it was i can't remember <laughs> it was ludicrous and then it got to a point where it was like this this is so unprofessional in front of everyone and it's so counterproductive for the type of energy that you need. So I remember just going, I really want to punch him in the face, but I'm just going to walk up to him and I'm going to give him a cuddle. So I just walked up to you and I just put my arm around you and went, I'm really sorry. And then you were like, I'm really sorry too. And then it was like, everything was normal again. But yeah, that and was, then we went into a, a great live and it carried on. But I, I, that's we haven't actually, used food colouring since. That's actually a better example. Because I, I, we often get asked questions on panels or other Q and A's and interviews, it's like, do you guys ever fall out? And my response is always, yes, we disagree about things. That's quite healthy, I think, in what we do. But nothing that can't be resolved with a without a pint at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Like you, we talk it over the end of the day. But that was so in the moment and heightened because there was <laughs> yeah, literally had to a be countdown. immediately diffused. It was a, it was a, yeah. Good, good point. <laughs> A lighter option of where we don't always get on oh, and no. fight. So much so we turned it into merch hung grumpy t-shirts oh. right oh, yeah. you know when we go traveling we do the stuff in the u.s we're on the road for weeks at a time there are members in the group who get incredibly hung grumpy i think it's all of us i think it's all of us if, yeah. if there's a time when we basically oh get i thought you were talking about izzy <laughs> <laughs> if there's a moment where we are bouncing from one thing to another and doing the reverse of the food marathons where we ate too much and we're actually doing a whole bunch of stuff and we kind of forget to look after ourselves in that moment and i mean that as in we bounce around we might get a signature dish from a restaurant we share it but we're not eating you know fruit and enough veggies because we're just mm. doing the stuff in the video then i think we all suffer we hit and wall, then we are there's a much points. finer line between yeah bickering and it's not yeah. fighting you, you it's mean, not arguing mean, we bicker when we're in america basically well they're the only places we've done long like two week trips and lost yeah. and hungry was 10 yeah. weeks when we were there years and years and years ago but it's not an argument we just bicker a lot it's more two weeks of yeah. basically 18 hours together all day every day and it's always boiling it's always really it's always hot. so hot and again listen to us moaning Time. we have the best job in the world yeah, yeah. it isn't work who else gets to do what we yeah, get to do it's, it's amazing but there are times when you're just exhausted and you snap a little bit earlier or quicker than perhaps we should we bicker i think that sometimes comes across on camera as well <laughs> yeah. i think my sarcasm like meter just goes yeah. and i, I think don't it think it sh- I gets aimed at you actually <laughs> and i don't know why and i, I, I do feel guilty hurt. about it because yeah, i'm the honestly. relentless one who's like let's <laughs> keep going <laughs> i think mine's more towards you so i might be yeah. annoyed at someone else or and then i'll just go right you're a target <laughs> and this comes back to our first words 
because you're so lovely that you'll just like shrug it off that's fine well i like it when you snap back with something more extreme than what i've said to you and i'm like oh that was really good <laughs> i think my favorite time that that backfired though was when we were in dubai and we'd had like that we they were that wasn't even 18 hour days that was like 20 hour days yeah, trying to get it done this marathon dubai, thing mad. and what i think i'd annoyed you for some reason and you'd worked with the production team and come up with a punishment which was the slingshot catapult thing on the <laughs> beach I, that, you was that the one that had a weight on limit that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you were like, uh, we, we, um, Jamie doesn't know this, but we've signed him up to do the, uh, this catapult. And I turned up. That was wasn't like, an annoyance thing. That was a, that will be really funny. And I was like, oh, we were all going to do I it. Hated the thought of that. Turned up and they went, right, stand on these scales. Stood on the scales and went, nope. <laughs> I was like, what? You're, 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 you're too heavy. And I was like, you might have come back. <laughs> <laughs> the poles in the ground might just bend. <laughs> I was like, I know I'm a bit overweight, maybe fairly overweight, but really, and they were like, no, 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 it's 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 it's, um, it's a it's a very low weight limit. I was like, nah. But I couldn't do it, and so you and James had to do it by yourselves. It what turned like seemed like it started out as a punishment for me. Yeah, got completely flipped on it its did head. Get flipped. Yeah, that was mad. It was really fun. It was really really scary. <laughs> do you reckon we'd ever do one of those marathons again? Definitely, I hope yeah, so. It's like they, they, they are intense they're and your awesome, stomach hates you for a couple of days mm. afterwards, but, yeah, but they're of- also the best way to see a snapshot of a city. And I still, even though the London Marathon was so long ago, I still refer to some of those restaurants as still my favourite, like they still stand yeah, yeah. strong as some of my favourite restaurants. And we got to try, yeah, 26 of them or 24 plus a few drinks mm. in that one day. Mad! It is mad. I love them though because I think we get as much out of them as the community do. So you go to these cities and you get a real snapshot um, but enough variety to that if you're ever going to visit you'd know some places that you'd want to go to and for us it's just boom, 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 boom. It's intense but you really get a... Yeah, when we went to Edinburgh for example mm. I feel like I've really, really seen and eaten Edinburgh yeah. Because we did yeah. twenty six point two dishes there. When, when you went back last year, didn't you go back? To I a went back to of Tapper, Tapper as yeah, an yeah. example, and some other places. Oh, the steaky pork place. The steaky, yeah, yeah. Berico- that is the Berico pork. And you know what? And and the the, the whole team there, they, they came. At, even the chef actually, I spoke to as well, and he was basically saying how like Iberico pork is something he has always loved. Remember, he was a Spanish chef working in Edinburgh, um, but because it is served rare it was quite new thing to serve pork that rare and not everyone in yeah, Edinburgh really understood that or in the UK full stop at the time um, and he wanted it on the menu because he loved it but not many people were ordering it and he actually said like after that video so many people in the because we had oh, Sorted wow. Eat uh, app and the recommendation yeah. says so many people coming in from Sorted across the space of a year and ordering that dish because it was the one that we recommended. No way, that's and, great. And he was like so chuffed that Amazing. this dish that he loved and cooked back home had on the menu in Edinburgh and no one really bothered with it because it was amazing. quite expensive. Love that. Because yeah, it's it was high expensive. quality yeah, yeah. and it's served like rare and pork people might sort of like scream steak. at that. It was so Amazing. good. It's a nice steak. You've, um, you've brought me on to a next question, actually. Where's there. the next food marathon? Uh, well, that would oh, be great, wouldn't it? I saw one person ask it in the in the messages, but it's been a constant question over the last few years: is where did the eat app go, Barry? Don't look at me. Oh, COVID. It's COVID. It was Barry's app. It was yeah, Barry's app. But COVID. No. Sorry, one of Barry's. So, <laughs> apps. <laughs> Diversity. Like I said, he, he's always diversifying, <laughs> yeah, diversifying the business. It all started when we wanted to start making some cookbooks, and we didn't know how to. We couldn't get a publishing deal, so we asked. The community help us create the, um, our, our cookbooks, uh, and therefore we created a, uh, a kind of cookbook subscription. And we're like, okay, this is working. Um, we managed to kind of get a couple thousand people signed up to that. And we're like, this is exciting. How can we build upon this? This is turning into like a, a club of sorts. So we turned the cookbook subscription into a club, and went, we could offer more than just cookbooks. So we offered uh, a platform we called Sorted Eat and a platform we called it's called Sorted Cook. Eat was an app to enable you to find, go to all the places that we went to and experience it yourself and get people around the world recommending places and put that on the list as well. Cook was a place where you could upload, where we were uploading recipe meal packs oh, yeah, um, yeah. that 
taught you smarter ways to cook. Which turned into sidekick. Which turned into sidekick. We also did 100 episodes of podcasts behind a paywall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah don't feast your ears. And yeah, then when kind of sidekick became uh, the most successful platform of them all, and it became the thing that we all started to care about the most because we saw the biggest difference it was making in the world and people using it on a regular basis and thought, actually, sidekick represents everything that we want to teach people how to cook. It's not just about cooking a recipe or even cooking a recipe pack it's about it, just thinking smart all the sustainability the smart stuff the taking so that became the, the heart of everything and you go that's with the, our, our, our attention then covid hit well not then but in amongst that covid hit and a few other things which meant the well a lot like, of the restaurants shut down yeah. yeah it all went on hold didn't it and, it and was, we couldn't guarantee one thing we've always been very careful and proud of is the, the quality that we put out mm. and it got to the point around that period of time with restaurants closed and then reopening and not reopening and some of them were some of them weren't some of them had changed the menus was everything we were recommended we couldn't guarantee was still even yeah. open or any good mm. and some of them wanted to give like deals and offers to the sort of community and with then emailing us and saying we're really struggling I don't know if we can afford to do yeah, that yeah. Right. no absolutely yeah. it, that's a horrible decision to have to make but yeah so as, as, a, as a reason for that we had to kind of strip everything back a little bit and just focus attention on making psychic as, as good as it possibly can be um, also worth pointing out like I don't think we ever talk about but everything we make including the tech is all made in house mm. like there's no there's no white label products or like agencies, things, or, agencies. Yeah. everything we've, we've got people in ourselves to help build the products from scratch so things like our e-platform that was made from scratch it's now on the shelf like it's, it'll take a lot of money and time to get that going again same as our cookbooks app it still works our resources are focused on it you can still go download it and use it um, but it's not what it could be Psychic does it all for mm. us now that's where our focus is so yeah. kind of a double it's, down on what matters yeah yeah I think that's a good point actually was the team lots of people want to know about the team and I think compared to a lot of other creators particularly of what's seen as our size of like subscribers like mm. 2.7 2.8 million subscribers go everyone ask well how come you've got a team of 20 odd people that's mm. really unique and really un unusual and i think the the big thing is the big difference that we've always had is that we've always done everything ourselves we've not had external management or agents or agencies or brought sort of freelancers into stuff because we just, they can't get skin in the game no. we, we 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 do everything ourselves we so, do all the deals ourselves everything i think other creators do have externally teams of that size for projects when they need them and that kind of thing we just have it on tap and that's always been the way that we've worked and i think there's been so many positives for that for us i think there's probably also been some um downsides to it as well and maybe not being able to have as many external connections and networks and things like that but we, we've always been very self-sufficient and in our own bubble mm. um but yeah we we certainly wouldn't be here being able to do this without it's, it's the, the team that we the built team mentality us. of again all working together for a common goal you care more if you're in the building and if you're part of that team like you can outsource those types of things it might be a little bit cheaper but it's so much harder to communicate what's important and that you're building this for a group of people i.e like a community that you genuinely do care of care about and care what they think whereas it's not just a um project for a freelance company to put together and then deliver and then it's like right that's great mm. well you know i think you create something it might take longer and it might be a little bit more expensive but you end up building something far better that the people who have built really really care about as a result i also think we'd frustrate external yeah of course like, we would, management we change every or week. agencies because we we change things we i think shift. we zig and we zag yeah I think we zig, the and, common we theme zig of and we this. zag and also we take decisions that wouldn't be in the best interest of a business mm. <laughs> like we'll turn away the money because we don't want to do that project yeah. over there and i think we'd probably frustrate people who were there just to make money yeah 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 Ooh. Well, there's silence, ready Stop for another question. Ready, ready for an oh, ad break? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a fun one? Mm. Fun one? Yeah, please. This no. has all been fun. I've been enjoying all of these. <laughs> Have you ever thought about leaving? <laughs> Why is that fun? Oh, is that How's a fun, that fun? one? <laughs> 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 oh, what the heck? Izzy's loving that. <laughs> 
spill the tea. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Have you ever thought? Yes. You have. I have. I wouldn't follow through on it. There have been times when it's been so intense. I've thought, I don't know whether physically or mentally I can continue doing this and be useful. Like that. That's genuinely how I felt sometimes. Um, and thinking in my darkest hour, I thought I could just get a really boring job and then I'd be finished at a certain time. And then had this sort of ridiculous idea that I would spend all my evenings doing really fun stuff and be a much better, happier person. And then as soon as you actually genuinely think into the reality of what that would be like, you're like, just get a grip, sort it out, talk to some people, um, remanage your diary a little bit, um, and you'll get through this intense period because it's worthwhile because you love what you, you genuinely do love what you do. So I think it's all for me linked to like the feeling of like the the impending feel of feeling of burnout yeah. which is That's which the is only because time the nothing only... we've ever done has been linear it's we have these peaks and troughs where so much happens in a mad month and then, then there's a couple of months that are a bit more normal and then, but there are those moments it's and an it, intense it, period like, it sometimes. reminds me of the adrenaline of working in professional kitchens where there, there are those intense moments and they're normally like 8 p.m. on a Saturday night when it's like the mo every seat in every restaurant is, but that only lasts an hour. Where some of our intense moments might last a couple of weeks because we've got a whole bunch of projects we're juggling. That's when it gets really, really mm. like, oh, I'm quite tired. But then you have to pinch yourself and go, it's still the best job ever. But how do we rebalance that? Yeah, you know, we, we, we could move on from that, but it's not. <laughs> oh, when yeah, when yeah. was that? Uh, don't say last week no 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 <laughs> but yeah over that period in, in lockdown when um it was like we don't know where this is going what we're we going to do and then sort of the lead out of that a lot of them have been linked to like some of the trips or when two massive projects happen to just collide and you have that really short window of going we just got to get through this mm. and we've got a lot to make and get out and a lot of it's external um and yeah in some of those the those sort of times it's more of a think of it's more of the thought of i don't know if i can do this let's, 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 it let's doesn't hash, carry let's, on let's hash this out <laughs> yeah yeah so i i'm intrigued because yeah, yeah. part of me goes so my word for you earlier was you're selfless mm. but i think it's also your biggest weakness as well yeah but it may be in that i you've never asked for any help ever you've never yeah. every every time we've said we think we, you, we should hire somebody to help you said don't need them yeah <laughs> yeah, you're in that position there. Yeah, uh, and we've had we have hired some. It's it, it's worked to move forward. In some cases, it hasn't quite worked as you expected it to. But do you think part of that is self-inflicted, in that in that kind of that, that feeling of being trapped or so on, or the fact you you, you don't ask for help ever? Yeah, I th yeah, probably. Yeah, some of it is that. Yeah, but and you get to a point where it's like, well, there's no way out of this. Then dig yourself out of the hole. But there is a way. Is talk. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. It's also the way that we, although we have this, we've all been in it from the start and we're all on par, we all have our own departments, yeah. as it were, in terms of the things that we do and the sort of people within the business that we, we work with to get the job done, whereas your part of the business never stops with production and the whole team around you. So there's kind of like... And I, I, a lot of the talks that I give is all about, you know, the value of the community and the value of the friendship that we have. And everything we always connect is the same values of a friendship to our relationship with our community in the sense that, you know, what values do you put on friendship? Loyalty, trust, authenticity, reliability and consistency. And it's those two, the reliability and consistency, which means that every Wednesday, every Sunday, now every Monday and every Friday because <laughs> we're doing more content because there's so much content that we want to make that timeline never stops whereas some of the things that we do we just don't quite get around to doing that because we're caught up in content or caught up in other things whereas your timeline never stops that's probably your, the your, concertina your, moment your job the most um the only job i think out in the world that kind of relates to what you do you're uh, you've got a tougher gig as arteta Oh. Like we're going again. Okay. It's five. a football reference. Was... <laughs> tell, tell, tell me when you're done. <laughs> you can nod off. You can get some shot yeah. eye, mate. The one that it's always, I always find with football, it's really tricky because they're like they're they're interviewed about the game at hand. But at the same time, what what's next? They go the next game. So what I'm thinking about is the next game. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, you can't think any further than the next game ahead of you. With content, 
it's ridiculous. With premiership teams, they deal with have to do with one game a week, maybe maybe two. We're doing at least three or four. Do you well, know that's, what's that's crazy terrible. about that though? Is also all of all of that content goes out free on the platform. It's got yep. ads in it. Mm. And you work so hard. We all work so hard, but you and the production no, team work so do. hard. And then you see comments going, why are you bothering with this, guys? We don't like it. Stop doing it. And you're like, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> and, and there's some people who love it. And people. And I, I think about certain formats, when we travel maybe with some of the podcasts, sometimes when we do different games or formats, different people like different things. And the people who we read everything as a as a group we read everything and there's people who sort of go oh you, i think you should stop doing this or why don't you put this on a different channel and you should think we're just giving you more free content you don't have we to try watch it. really have, hard have you <laughs> have you ever commented something negative on somebody else's content no no no, no. i find it a really yeah. unusual Thing to do. If, uh, there, there is stuff that I, I like see opinions. that I, that I don't uh, like. Constructive criticism, but, 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 pass it on. The first episode was a failure. <laughs> yeah. And we asked for constructive criticism, <laughs> yeah. we got it, and now it's one of the best things we do. Yeah. And the thing is, the, the reality of our situation is when your comments, we all, we all read them because we, we are obsessed by them, but the reality is you've got one, two, three, four, five, six people who sit around a table and decide on what's going to be made. And it's all based upon what people are saying, how what the market's doing, what we're thinking is appropriate at that time. What's seasonal, what's on what's trend, seasonal, what we should be talking about. Also, mm. what gives us joy, what makes us happy. Yeah, yeah, what's fun to do. And we we do our best. And look what you're doing, he nearly left us. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, at no, nice. point. no. Wait, <laughs> at no point. At no point, at no point would I have ever done that. It was a, th- it was a thought of like- Goodness, this is hard. And, and as a result, genuinely over probably the last two or three years like the team's grown the the production team we have are the best people on the planet like i haven't found felt close to burnout as a result because you know yeah it's such a strong group mm. but and i was I, just giving an honest answer no, 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 of one a, time th- in history i think it's a good answer because we do need to talk about that kind of stuff more because i think it would be weird if we all woke up every single day going I can't wait to work today. Like that would be so I do unusual. And it does, and yeah. it, but I'm relentless. <laughs> <laughs> and it does because it does have an effect on the personal life as well. Because working into evenings, going away, doing stuff at weekends, those big two week long trips. Of course, that has a massive effect on family life and personal life, and seeing other friends and all of that kind of thing as well. So. Of course it takes its toll and sometimes i don't know i feel like we don't talk about it enough because also we're here to do a job mm. and we want to do the best job that we can we want to get it done maybe that's a bit of a, a distraction but it's probably healthy to talk about it a bit more mm. but also over the years we've all had moments where we've just needed a bit more space yeah. Yeah, we, whether that's such whether major, that's marriage yeah. kids health scares personal travel like all sorts of things you're like just give me a week yeah, so just get, yeah, give, yeah. give me a week or two, it's and we always do. What we and we, do. Yeah, and yeah. we all just reshuffle, rejuggle, and go. Yeah, sure. Do you know the biggest thing that stops me from leaving? What the f- would I do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I, you've got all of this <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> what, what job could I get next? I have no idea. Yeah, that's the we've main got, thing. We've isn't got it? a new application in, really interesting. His name's Jamie Spafford. Google? No, 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 no. no. What is this? <laughs> I, yeah. I've been, You'd have HR issues before you even join. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yes, okay, I've got a marketing He, he identifies but, as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Uh, Mini. It Missy. was definitely Missy. 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 Uh, Missy for copyright reasons, it was Missy. Missy, 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 Missy Mouse. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Ursula. Um, but yeah, I forgot like, <laughs> <laughs> about, about, about that. We have to oh, make I'm this work. Elizabeth. We absolutely have to make this work because I don't know what a real job looks like, feels like, would do. The only good news is it is possible because both James and Janice have done it. Yeah, true. Yeah. They've both gone off and got That's other careers, true. so yeah. it is possible. And YouTube creators are retiring all the time now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a dream, I think they made a lot more money than we have. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, a bit of the biggest... We actually touched upon this when we spoke to um, Johnny Fisher, the heavyweight boxer that mm. we had on uh, Under the Cloche, um, that actually it's amazing how reframing how you think about things 
um, completely changes your perspective because I think I was always having done this because it was such an accidental, amazing thing to be a part of. You're actually, or I was working towards a moment and I was like, well, when we get to here or when we do this thing or when we get X amount of views or to this location, I'm going to be happy. Like it's it's like a journey towards a moment that unlocks happiness. Enjoy the journey because the and destination actually, may not arrive. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's actually every single day that you do it, it's a, it is such a gift to be able to be doing what we're doing enjoy every tiny little moment because like you said you're thinking what on earth would i do otherwise we could be doing some really boring rubbish stuff whereas actually we do really amazing creative fun and it makes good, a difference and good it makes stuff a difference. yeah and actually that's all that matters and and therefore you have to appreciate that and when you do appreciate that, you do get the happiness. And then it doesn't matter like where you where you end up or how you get there. You're happy because you are intrinsically happy. Yeah. And I think that's something that certainly over the last couple of years, I've really had to reframe and going, this isn't a means to an end. This is an amazing journey where every day should should unlock the happiness. YOLO. YOLO. There's a, there's a, there's a <laughs> thanks, Emma. Did you come up there's, with that yourself? No, a, no, no. You know what YOLO is. Of course I do. Right, fine. Okay, great. Good. Talking of happiness, there's a um, there's that that triangle uh, diagram of of of, of happiness by is it Maslow thing hierarchy hierarchy of needs. needs. Mm. Where there's the, the 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 bottom level, which is kind of your basic needs of just being healthy um, and just patterns and rhythm to life. Then there's the kind of the, the big one, which is about surrounding yourself by people who you trust connections. and love and connections and making sure that you're comfortable in your environment, which I think we have. Mm. We're all healthy, luckily. Mm. We have each other. But the top one is about purpose. As I say, if you, if you, ident- if you understand your purpose in life, and I think purpose is, purpose is sorted. And I think that's where we are lu- so lucky because most people don't understand, can't find their purpose. But through our work, we've found a purpose and something that's make a difference. And that's thanks to people watching who've given us that purpose. We didn't set out for it, they came to us. Oh my goodness, I just realised that I'd have... I'd, I've got a daughter and a wife. <laughs> that could be my purpose. But if I didn't have sorted, what would I get up for? It's so true. It's weird. You, you, weird again, you, I guess that's why I, I, I do this for my family. But yeah. if I didn't have this, what would I do? And I only get this from talking to them. When we meet people in the... Don't go! <laughs> Don't go! When we meet people... Family, like, kids, whatever, you! Read All comments, get emails, messages, meet people on the street. Like, yeah. yeah, that is... That is the purpose. That is that is the purpose. It felt more like a lock-in than a kind of that like a, a, good a pub yeah, table good chat, wasn't it? a refill. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there, there, I mean, there's still a lot more questions. Yeah. <laughs> We've barely scratched the surface of Should, the questions. Let's see, see what you guys think. If you enjoyed that and you found it genuinely interesting, then um, let us know in the comments. Do all the liking of the videos and stuff like that. Just make sure that we know. And then we'll do another one Yeah, um, if you want it. Because it's unusual for us to spend an hour talking about ourselves. Yeah, normally we get an interesting person in that seat. <laughs> and look Sorry. we've ended up with. I nearly fell asleep, if I'm honest. I do need to go and get some shut-eye now. Can we do that, please? Yeah, let's what, can I? Sorry, can I do that, please? <laughs> Hooray, the Ebbers man comes with his band of brothers and a splintered bum. Spoo, trials and barrels of fun in a live stream weekend show. Huh.